Trading the foreign exchange market carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin. Utilizing leverage can carry even higher level of risk and can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market or using any of our software alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal investment objectives, level of experience, and risk tolerance. There is a possibility that you could potentially sustain significant loss. You should not invest any capital or trade that you cannot afford to lose. It is your responsibility to be aware of and understand all risks associated with foreign exchange trading and to seek professional advice from an independent certified financial advisor if you have any doubts. Avoria Prime does not exercise trading authority over your trades. You and you alone exercise discretionary trading authority over every trade. I have an experimental account. I'm always only running GBP pairs on on the one hour time frame, And I just got a trade myself this week, um, literally last night, um, as I actually showed this account on my uh, last night on a, on a call and I wasn't in a trade. And uh, GBP AUD scored me a level six trade last night on the hour. Uh, pretty exciting. Uh, you can see that that is a great buy it took right there at the bottom of the channel and it's riding it right on up to the TP. We're about halfway there. That's a beautiful trade. I, I got to love when uh, Gearbox catches those sniper entries, right? And this account's actually running swing settings um, as it is only running the GBP pairs, but always cool to see. Nonetheless, uh, we also have a smaller little account here. Up, no, that one's on arrow. Here it is. Uh, and $4 profit on the 826 account. Nothing too crazy um you know going on here now if we go over to some of my other accounts i have my 10k account we're up uh, about one percent floating profit a little over 1.2 percent um got out of all its dd and we're going to look at some ifx books and talk about some stuff today and as well ask let you guys ask some questions um awesome do, 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 do. I see somebody sharing my FX books. Yeah, if you guys want to share my FX books, I'm always down to look at my FX books and talk about them. I love uh, when customers share their my FX books here with us. Um, but we're going to get right into it. You know, this, this is a swing account as well. I'm running uh, here that you see is doing uh, pretty pretty well. Uh, we'll take a look at some other accounts. Here's an account. Um, that one's not what I want to look at. Hold on. Let's see. Where is my guy I want to look at as well. Let's look at the trends overall, what's going on right now. Um, do, 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 do. All right. So when we take a look here, we see that EJ is consolidated, AUD, NZD is consolidated. We have CHF, JPY, pretty random. GBP, USD is pretty random. And a lot of pairs biased, and then a lot are trending. Now, when we say trending, what I'm noticing here is they are trending one direction, but they're trending very slowly often. Um, some of them are getting entries, but many have been trending in a, a different, um, Nick Sorensen said out of drawdown. This was the most drawdown and longest drawdown these last six weeks for me since using Gearbox since June of 2020, Nick was in the beta test group. Uh, he said, I still did 4.9% the last six weeks. GB did what it's designed to do and sustain the big moves. And we got out, love the software. Thanks for all your effort and data, Tyler. That's the key, Nick. We've designed it to handle the moves where most other products are going to fail. People are going to see Gearbox will just keep you in the game. And uh, yeah, that can be boring sometimes, but this is wealth management. We're growing our wealth. I'm not sure if any of you have 401ks, IRAs, different things. I'm not sure if you look at those things all the time, but uh, chances are if you looked at your 401k every day, you'd probably give yourself a heart attack too. Um, Gearbox is a long-term trader. We're looking for long moves. Um, let's go into here. This is an account uh, I'm going to show you. <laughs> it's Anita making money while bored is pretty awesome. Uh, Steven Rath, GB finally bounced back after four to six weeks, uh, up over 50 balance March 2nd. Uh, Thomas Lav, can you explain the bit max gears? We'll get into the calculator in a little, Thomas Lav, but yes, um, raising your max gears that high to 13 or 14 definitely could have a negative impact. And we'll talk about that. Uh, uh, awesome. I, I'm not sure how to say your name. GGNSN says, hello, Tyler. I was running account a bit aggressive. And when I saw DD above 30%, I lowered my risk. It has done amazing uh, since November. Awesome. Uh, it's Is it okay for Gearbox to only max one trade per week? Um, Jennifer, I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Um, you know, one trade per week could be pretty boring. Sometimes it'll happen, uh, but it does happen. 
six trades this week, swing settings. I did change some pairs to lower time frame, but no trades on them can set. But you did get six trades this week. That's awesome. So here's another account of mine. This is a smaller $1,500 account. Um, and we're going to look at the MyFX book in this account today because I love to show this account specifically. This account, um, I've recently downgraded to four max pairs running. It was previously uh, trading six max pairs. And then I saw a, uh, a more uncomfortable drawdown and I decreased my risk. And I want to show the MyFX books and talk about it a little bit. So uh, we're actually going to go ahead and open up a new tab. And we're going to go over to our handy dandy MyFX book here. And we're going to sign in and we're going to take a peek at some accounts. All right. So first thing I, I told you, I want to take a look at an account that got into some riskier times. And uh, this was a $1,500 swing account. And it was trading six pairs at once. And um, you can see that it had a period where it got into drawdown for a long period in time. But why I'm showing you this is I want to show you how Gearbox is designed to sustain massive volatility. And I'm also going to tell you what we've been working on behind the scenes to prevent situations like this from occurring again. Um, so the first thing you see is we got into drawdown November 24th. This drawdown ran from December, January, February, all the way until the end of March. We just got out of it. So I want you to think about this account was in drawdown for three months. Did it get out with six max pairs trading on a small account on swing? Got 38% drawdown. But did it recover? Yes. Did it take some losses? Yes. Is it almost back overall higher profit than it was? It actually is. It was at 80% when it took those losses. We're at 81% today. So the point in showing you all this is there's going to be those months where things may not go as well. We've still won 76% of trades, right? All right, we've had in August, 14, 15, 11, 18, then 5% December, super slow. We didn't make any money in January. We lost money in February. We made 4% in March. We're halfway through April and we've already made more than we made in March. So we're back on track. And the point in showing you this is, this is a long-term uh, building platform, right? If you look at America's top public hedge funds, it reports 55% a year profit. Well, we're talking about since end of July. So we'll say August, September, October, November, December, February, January, February, March, April. We're talking in like half the time we beat America's best performing hedge fund. Um, so, you know, I, I love to show people this because it, it's very important to understand that you have to have your expectations right. Um, especially if you're using smaller balances, you get into a trend, something crazy happens. And let's even take a look at the 10K swing account I showed you guys. We're up 84% right now. All right, we've been running this account since August. It's been doing a little over 7.5% a month. Now we had a 17% drawdown. We even took a loss here, 63 to 57. Now what happened? Let's talk about it. This has to do with correlating pairs trending in the same direction. And one of the big features we've been working on adding to Gearbox, which I will tell you is in beta testing, we are testing it right now, it is the correlation feature. And if you don't know what I mean by the correlation filter, we're gonna talk about correlation today. So let's come over here and talk about the correlation filter and how this is gonna work. Is any pairs, we, we had played around with the notion, the notion of 75%, but as we looked into it, it would really limit trade opportunities. So we're looking more in the 85% range. So what you're looking at here, and I'll give you an example, is uh, let's say GBP, well, we're not even trading the JPY pairs anymore, but I'm just going to use them as an example. Uh, let's say GBP, JPY went to enter a sell trade, okay? And then right afterwards, AUD, JPY went to trigger a sell trade it's gonna block AUD JPY from taking a sell trade as well. Why? Because correlation this positive means that often these pairs are gonna move in the same direction. So if the trade was to go against you and you were in both of these pairs, you're essentially just doubling your risk. So what we're doing here is we're decreasing your risk by making it to where GBP JPY entered that sell and AUD JPY went to enter a sell, we're gonna block the sell and say, you can only enter a buy which is almost its own hedging feature. We're not gonna force it to enter the buy, but we're not gonna let it enter the sell, um, which is ultimately gonna decrease your risk. And the same goes for negative correlation. So let's say GBP, JPY enters a sell, we're not gonna allow EuroCAD to enter a buy because negative correlation typically means that they are gonna move the opposite direction. So if both pairs were to go the opposite direction and trend against us, that would also um, create risk, right? So we're, we're essentially creating this correlation filter 
to allow you to scan all these pairs, but never risk getting into multiple pairs that are moving the same direction and having the same volatile move uh, trend against them because we wanna decrease our risk. So this correlation filter is gonna massively help keep um, your drawdown and your risk much, much lower. And I will tell you, we're very close to this. We've been testing it for two weeks. Um, we're about to add the final correlation numbers in and do a, another test run. And uh, I'd say we're a week or two out from releasing the correlation filter, as long as all goes smoothly. I told you guys it was in the works. We've worked hard on it. It is an advanced feature, um, but it, it's been coming along and I'm very excited to get this out to all of you to help you, uh, you know, experience more profit with your gearboxes and less risk. Um, same concept happened on a 2000 sniper account of mine. Uh, it got into pure correlating pairs. It got into all CHF pairs and it was a rough time, right? And we're going to take a look at it. We'll see that this account up until all the CHF pairs had started trending somewhere around February, this account had not gotten into over 12% drawdown and it was up over hundred percent. And then we ended up in 56% drawdown. No, that's not pleasant. Don't get me wrong. We were running sniper entry, so our stop losses were minimal. But the point in showing you this is this did happen. And what did we do to combat this? We said, okay, well, first six max pairs. And the other thing I will disclaim is this account was running a higher starting lot size than it should have been. Um, it was running a 0 0.03 starting lot on a 2K balance, plus running six max pairs on sniper. But still, nonetheless, um, you know, it, it it's still come out of all of this and still continuing to come out of it day by day. Um, getting out of different trades, which has been very powerful to see because, again, it shows you that the chill out features in Gearbox know how to work. If you do get into drawdown, it'll chill. The balance protection will activate and it'll do what it needs to do. Um, so if we take a look here, let's go, you know, and we can take a look at this account, right? We're, we're still riding up this GBP AUD trade. Such a beautiful trade, right? That got to love Gearbox when it catches these amazing trades. And, you know, the higher entries are always great trades. Um, I'm going to read through some comments while we're sitting here. I know I've been talking a bit. Let me get into back into the chat. Let me actually refine the chat. There it is. Cool. Uh, Stanley, there's no way for me to code Gearbox to have specific stop losses for each specific gear uh, rather than stop loss depth for all gear. Um, the only way you could do that is you would go change your stop loss manually in between gears. So what I mean by that is if the first stop loss deploys, so in this case, if I want to change my stop loss right now on GBP AUD, my next trade is going to take with the next stop loss. So you can manually do it, absolutely, but there's no way for me to program it to, hey, each level put this stop loss. Um, so in this case, how it would work is maybe you, if GBP AUD was going against you, you want the next stop loss at only 200 pips. All right, put 200 here, the next trade is going to take with 200. Um, it wouldn't matter if it resets all the ghost trades because you already have trades open, Stanley. Um, ghost trades become irrelevant if there's already trades open. Um, that would only come into effect if you had no trades open. But if you're trying to change stop losses for multi levels, you already have trades open. So, no, that would not affect you. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, so I said, can you talk about Amy settings, please? Amy's just running sniper settings and she had a $500 account trading two pairs at once. A little bit on the riskier side, running two pairs at once. But again, that was all it was, sniper with two pairs. Uh, which website do you get the information which shows which pairs are consolidating random that you were showing us? Uh, that's not a, uh, a website. That's actually a software um, that was developed by another one of our team members. It's not out to the company. Um, it's, it's really just kind of a tool one of our other developers created, and it actually reads the actual tick data um, from the broker you're using. So in this case, it's pulling all of the chart data from um, the broker I'm using here currently, Envy. It's pulling all of the tick data here, and it's actually researching every single one of these bars and lines to come up with the determinations for trend biased, random, or consolidated. So it's not a website. It's actually physically a software here, just like an EA that is reading the data and making these determinations. Um, so that's not coming from a, a website. Um, can you speak about Sniper with range of 15 or 16 at the basic settings? Um, you know, Quam, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I wouldn't do it. Um, you know, essentially, if you want to, if you want to do that, I would just use swing. 
um, to be honest with you, you know, I mean, you can change your level range, sure, but really settings wise, any of those custom settings, I would just look at the calculator, right? Um, you know, I'm not going to recommend or any different settings than what I, I, I have in the manager right now. Um, but if you want to change custom things in Gearbox, you can go through the EA Academy, learn what all of those settings do and make your own customizations um, and, and use the risk calculator to decide. And we'll get into the risk calculator in a minute. Um, No, Stanley, you hit OK. Um, if you if you already have a trade open and you want to change a stop loss for the next trade that's going to open, you simply would go here, you'd hit, you'd change it, and you'd hit OK, not X. You'd hit OK. It does not matter if the ghost trade's clear if you already have a trade open, right? So in this case, GBP AUD already has a trade open. So if the ghost trade's clear, it does not matter because the trade's already open and it's going to continue to manage that trade. The ghost trades are just to get you into a trade. Once you're in a trade, the ghost trades really aren't as relevant. Um, all right, let's get into a little bit of the risk calculator. I think that's where we need to go here because a lot of people want to understand their risk always. Uh, so give me a second here. I'm going to pull up my Google Drive and get me my Gearbox simulation. There we go. All righty. So let's talk a little bit about this, right? This is our, our risk calculator. Now, um, keep in mind, uh, if you're using a thousand dollar account, you're going to use this side. Anything under ten grand, you're going to use this side. Anything over ten thousand, start balance, you're going to use this side. Just purely because of math, because there's some differences. Now, let's say on average, most people probably going to enter around gear five uh, point ten lot near starting lot of thousand. So this is based on one pair. So let's just take a look at this chart. So we can see on average, most people are going to be entering trades somewhere around four to five, all right? Um, somewhere around four to five. And so based on that, you know, we can just come over to this calculator and you can obviously check it on two and three and higher ones, but on average, the most are happening in four to five. So we're just gonna come in here and let's say you're entering after four and five. What would it take for you to get into a uncomfortable drawdown? Well, let's talk about it, right? If you're using a small account, um, in three pairs, all went 393 more pips against you from where you entered, but you waited 209 pips to enter. So you're talking about 601 total pips. That puts you in 15% drawdown on one pair. Multiply that by three, that puts you at 45% drawdown on a $1,000 account running three pairs at once. High risk stuff, right? You know, obviously, maybe on a $1,000 account, maybe you should only run two max pairs. Um, because your risk is inherently higher. Now, if we go over to a 10K account, running the same, you know, rule of thumb starting lot, what's it take to get into 15%? It, it's a little bit larger. Um, let's say 21, around 625. So to get into what would become 60% drawdown, all three pairs would have to go 625 pips against you from your entry, which is another, that's a total 833 pips with no retracement against you. Um, and, and just understanding some of the math, you can see it, it takes large movements for you to get into uncomfortable drawdown. And even then, once you get into over 25% drawdown, remember your balance protection feature is going to stop taking any new trades. And when it stops taking any new trades, it becomes more like the chill out, um, you know, chill out feature. And it's just going to kind of hold those trades. Like I showed you um, on that $1,500 account, if we go back over here and it was super aggressive, it's running you know, six pairs at once on swing on a 1500. And um, yeah, it got into some, some times. Um, but when you look at that, all right, the same concept as the chill out feature just held these trades. It didn't take any new trades. It didn't continue to deploy risk into the market. It just said, all right, let's just chill, hold this stuff and see what happens. And yeah, did it take months to get out of the DD? Absolutely. I was in six pairs on swing settings and going through super trending and volatile times, but we made it out. And I love to show that because even a normal period in drawdown, like let's just look at a normal period in drawdown here. This started September 9th. It ended October 1st. Okay. And we went from 19% to 30%. So right there in that month, we had made 10%, but we were in drawdown for a whole month. All right. And, and I have to show you guys this because this is a part of Gearbox. Gearbox can be boring. It can get you in trades that they just sit there for a long time. And if you're looking at your MT4 every day, you're gonna be bored out of your mind because Gearbox is a long-term trader. By design, its goal is to get in trades and make profit. Here again is another period, October 26th, 
stayed in drawdown all the way until November 4th. Okay, that wasn't as long of a period, but guess what? It got in and out. It still was like two weeks of drawdown. You know, so the concept is, yes, there's going to be times where Gearbox gets in trades for longer periods of time, and you have to be okay with that and understand what the gains look like, right? And, and even the fact that I've been running Gearbox on a $250 account. Has, has anybody ever seen this before? This account runs one max pair on super sniper settings. It's been running since August. Since August, it's up 100%. No, it wouldn't pay the monthly fee. But I also didn't blow a $250 account. You guys know any other softwares out there that uh, they work on $250 and they can get you gains like this and run through market cycles like we've gone through? I mean, if you, if you know of any others, you can let me know. But Gearbox is, in my opinion, one of the most powerful softwares if you understand how to use it and you understand how to deploy risk because it can work and it can work incredibly well. And this $250 account is just a perfect example of the fact that it's possible. Um, with proper risk management and settings, it's possible. Now, this account's only taken 60 trades since August. That's really boring. If you were a USA user, chances are that means since August, you've maybe approved something like 20 trades. So maybe like two or three a month, right? Nothing, nothing really exciting. Uh, but again, the point is it can work. Um, and a lot of people, I think, are always trying to push it a little too hard and forget that the name of the game here is patience, right? That's why I designed Gearbox. I designed Gearbox for those people that they just want to see, um, you know, consistent wins over the long haul. They don't want to have the roller coaster every single week. Um, Sunita, making money while bored beats no money with high drama filled life. You're telling me this is why I designed Gearbox. I used to every week, I used to be using one of those softwares that uh, I put a, I put a post in the Gearbox Telegram this week and it said, be a sniper, not a machine gunner, and that trading is 80% um, patience, 20% execution. It said, be a sniper, not a machine gunner. And I, you know, the truth is, I used to use softwares that they were like machine guns. They were just firing trades on and off. And every week I was on this roller coaster of up and down, up and down, up and down, drawdown, profit, drawdown, profit. And I got over it. I said, I want to use something that's just going to consistently make me money. I'm not going to have to go stress out and pull my hair out every week and manually intervene and question if I'm going to lose all my money. I wanted to develop something that, you know, it can withstand those larger movements. It can handle things that go against us if they happen. It can handle the good times and the bad times. That's a good product. Um, Ken, great question. He said, indeed, more of the time, higher the fees, will profits cover the fees? Well, it really depends. Again, the, you know, it depends on the swaps and which way they're going. And the answer is sometimes no. Sometimes it'll hit TP and you'll lose money because the swaps are so high from holding trades for so long. And um, we don't calculate that. But the point in understanding that is, would you rather get out of those trades or have blown your account? And in most scenarios, another software would have blown your account. Well, Gearbox gets you out at close to break even or very little, little profit or loss. Um, Dun, dun, dun. All right, let's keep reading through the comments. Um, I don't see anything new, so I'm just going to keep ranting. All right, well, let's get back into the calculator because I want to continue to show you guys uh, different examples. And, and Thomas Love, you had asked about, you know, going on these later gears, going all the way to like gear 14. All right, well, first off, gear level 14 is like 4,000 pips. All right, first off, there's not a single currency pair you're trading that's going 4,000 pips. All right, so that's just a no-go. On the GBP pairs, we have, you'll see by default, it's programmed to allow up to gear 12. All the other pairs outside of GBP and Euro AUD, you'll notice they're programmed around eight. Why is this? Well, it's actually only gonna go to seven because zero is one. So you're actually only gonna go around seven. All right, and the big reason for this is, I don't believe in typically entering a lot later than that. Um, you know, as an extra trade on a normal pair. Um, I'd rather just hold it. And if you need to manually increase a gear to nine or 10 to allow another entry or two, absolutely. But for the normal person, that really is programmed to stop taking trades on the normal pairs. You might be saying, well, what are the normal pairs? Let's go back over here. We're programmed for everything besides these pairs right here to stop at seven, meaning it'll take gear seven, which is level eight, and it'll stop. It won't take eight, nine, 10 on any of the pairs right here, unless you manually increase. 
Um, by default, like I said, these are programmed to stop right here after seven. So if you wanted to take gear eight, nine, 10, you'd have to go manually raise your max gears in those pairs. But again, remember what that distance looks like. Even to go to gear nine, you're talking about 834 pips um, from the time uh, or, you know, that pair moved. And if I really take a look at these pairs, I mean, many of the pairs I'm highlighting right here, the chances of them going 800 pips without a retracement, I mean, it, it can happen sometimes, but it's very minimal. And uh, if it does happen, just manually go increase the gear level by one, but do not increase them to the 13, 14. I mean, that's just, that's absurd. I mean, that's just, there's no reason to even add that extra risk, uh, especially since before you would even ever make it, their balance protection is already going to kick you out uh, anyways, unless you increase your balance protection. So I hope that that answers um, <laughs> your, your questions uh, there, Thomas Love. And Mackenzie, I like that you you got an LOL out of keep ranting. You know, I, I mean, I could talk about Gearbox all day long. Um, you know, so sometimes I think I'm ranting, but you guys are getting value, so that's the good thing. Uh, so let's let's keep going into it here, and let's talk a little bit more about kind of what's going on, the different market cycles. I mean, right now, I know that the past few weeks for new users, if you're a new user on here, some of you haven't maybe received as many trades as you wanted to. Um, and one of my recommendations. Um, Ravi said, why did Gearbox take trade only Thursday and Friday? Well, Ravi, um, if you don't understand why it only took a trade on Thursday and Friday, chances are I would recommend getting back in to your EA Academy and your AP Academy to better understand Gearbox. Um, because again, if we were to answer that question, I just took my first trade this week on this account on GBP AUD. And well, why did that happen? Well, that's because that's when the entry was right. That's when the entry allowed for an execution, right? It's, it's when the market brought me to where Gearbox would take an entry. Um, you see GBP USD didn't get an entry. GBP CAD did not get an entry. GBP NZD didn't get an entry. Actually, GBP NZD is, um, is actually very close to an entry, um, which is very fascinating. Um, Let's take a peek here and see what's going on. You can see, see it's been playing both sides of the market, buys and sells. It actually had all the way down here, ran down to a buy six, and it just missed that seven because GBPNZD takes the next level. I would have taken a level seven trade after Wednesday. And uh, GBPNZD just missed it. Um, you can see I just missed a phenomenal trade. If GBPNZD had just gone a little bit lower, I would have entered that buy. And I missed it. And now it's riding back up. And chances are these buys are going to close in the ghost server, but I'm going to get to ride the sell back down. So if this goes, you know, up to my uh, my gear seven entry for a sell, guess what? I'm going to take the sell and ride it back down um, based on what it's telling me right here. Uh, but I did miss, you know, my, my buy six opportunity, um, which is also why we are going to be entering the enter now button here. Meaning that you could have came here yesterday and maybe last night I would have looked and I said, oh, I'm on a buy six and my next entry is a seven. Uh, just enter it, right? And I could have just hit enter now. So we are going to add the enter now button as that would have allowed me to get into this GBP NZD opportunity and seen, yeah, that's a solid move. We're already in level six. I'm waiting for seven. I'll take the entry, right? Um, so again, all based on decisions, but Ravi, um, that, that would be why Gearbox only trades when there's opportunities that it sees. Um, so the opportunities it saw were on Thursday and Friday. It didn't see them on Monday, uh, Tuesday, or Wednesday. Uh, Mackenzie, if we were to accidentally turn off auto trade and turn it back on, will we lose the ghost trades? There's no harm. Um, no, if you turn it off, I'll just turn it off, for example. I just turned it off, I turned it back on, and uh, my ghost trade stayed. So that's the answer to your question there. Let's see if there's any more questions here. If we should get into, you know, the, the week ahead. Uh, Ravi, do you have any more extra videos for Gearbox? Yeah, Ravi, there's so many videos for Gearbox, brother. Go into the AP Academy, go into the EA Academy, and even go into AP Live. There's there's weekly videos. There's, there's hundreds of videos on Gearbox. They're all inside your AP, EA, and AP Live. There's three different sections for you to get into. Uh, AP Live has every recording that I've done weekly. Um, EA Academy has every video going over each and every setting of the software and how you can customize it to your own liking. And AP Academy obviously goes into the basics of understanding the product, the software, the strategy, how it works, um, and your ability to get set up and start using it. 
So yeah, there's hundreds of videos. I mean, for the people who are on this call that don't know about the resources, really get into your AP Academy and I'll just stop sharing my screen for a minute because I want to show you guys where to access this stuff. So if you go into your Avoria Prime back office, let me just log in here real quick. Give me a second. My, my internet, I'm using a VPN right now. So it always is a little bit slower, but I like my privacy. Um, all right, I'm gonna share my screen. So when you come in here, you're gonna go into your AP Academy. You're gonna see a big button right here. It says, welcome to AP Academy. Go ahead and click get started. And once you get started, it's gonna go through your initial product setup. And then you're gonna go into the AP Academy and get set up. Now, once you go through your AP Academy, you're gonna see two other buttons unlock here. And uh, that's gonna be for your EA Academy and AP Live. So once you complete your AP Academy, you have to complete your AP Academy. If you do not complete your AP Academy, you're not gonna get access to the EA Academy, you're not gonna get access to your AP Live. So make sure you finish your AP Academy because if you don't finish it, you're missing out on so many amazing resources that also are to come. So go through your AP Academy, go through everything, complete it all. And then you're gonna notice that you're gonna unlock some other stuff. And I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, go into another account of mine where I have that stuff unlocked. So I can show you guys. So just give me a second to log into a different account here. All righty, log in and here we are, we are logged in. Okay, now uh, let me go ahead and reshare my screen. So once you go through everything you see, and I, I, uh, we've added some videos, so it doesn't have me even completed yet, uh, but we'll go into the AP Academy. And once you're inside the AP Academy, you're gonna be able to finish up all this stuff and then get access to EA and AP Live. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and do that um, because inside those academies, you're gonna learn so much more about the products, make sure you access your setup course, go through everything, get everything set up, right? Um, so I'm just gonna mark complete and you can see your register for Gearbox Live, register for the Telegram. Let's mark this complete. And uh, you, know, you, you wanna make sure you're getting into these academies so that you can make sure that everything is uh, set up the way it needs to be. Um, I don't know why it's saying that this one's only 91% completed. Resume. Where's where's the missing piece here? I'm not too sure actually. But like I said, everything's inside here. You just got to go through everything. Once you go through all the content, you're going to unlock all the amazing resources so that you can go into all the videos. Um, there's so much video education for you. It's not even funny. So make sure you're tuning into the AP Academy, your EA Academy, and your AP Live for all the recordings, anything you miss. They're also available on the company's YouTube channels um, and along those lines. So if you haven't as well, you can go into, uh, you know, Avoria Prime YouTube as well, where you'll be able to find a lot of this stuff. So if we go over here to Avoria Prime YouTube, and you'll see that we have precision and intraday insights right here. So every weekly call I've ever done is uh, right here. And you can go through the entire playlist. Um, this is April 15th, you see here for intraday modes. Um, and you can scroll through and you can see every single call I've ever done is right here. Uh, and you can plug into them. You can learn from the beginning of time to now when we launched Gearbox all the way until now, um, different ways it's been handled as well, you can tune into tons of education. So make sure you're leveraging your resources. Um, let me check the chats here. Yeah, Ravi, you have one more question. Go ahead, throw it in the chats. That's that's what we're here for. Uh, let me keep reading through. Um, on NZD CAD, I'm both sides as of this week. I have six uh, positions open on the buy and one on the sell. My sell is in floating profit. Question is, should I take the profit on the sell? Um, you know, um, I closed out my NZD CAD buys yesterday manually, Andy. I'm not sure if you saw uh, me post that in my telegram. I, I was in floating profit on NZD CAD buys yesterday. I took them and closed them manually. I'm now in floating profit on the sell myself um, on an account. Let's take a look at which account that is. Uh, I think that was my 10K account actually, or maybe it was a 1500. Let's take a peek here. Uh, it was actually this account. And guess what? My sales are actually about to trigger as well uh, their take profits. 
So yeah, uh, in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to manually close these. I mean, they're about to hit take profit, but uh, sometimes I get impatient. And boom, just like that, I just closed my NZD CAD cells and uh, added to my weekly floating profit. I'm up two and a half percent on this account this week. Uh, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. But I also did close my NZD CAD buys uh, manually. Um, you know, so you can see that I uh, closed the NZD CAD buys here. Uh, manually and got out of all of them. Um, and that was important. So, you know, it's kind of, it's all up to your preference, how you want to handle things. Um, but I did, you know, get out of those manually myself um, on many accounts. And I was also playing the sell back down as well. Um, so I hope that answers your question there. Oops. Let's go back to the chat. Stanley, you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I don't pair softwares with other softwares. Um, and like, I, I only run one software on one trading account, meaning that if I want to use multiple softwares, I have multiple trading accounts. I'm not mixing softwares and multiple trading accounts. And the reason for that is it messes up the analytics. How am I supposed to show somebody what one software can do on a MyFX book if I'm running two or three softwares on that MyFX book? Um, it just invalidates all results. So, you know, personally for me, so that I can actually share accurate data and results, I split one broker account to one software account, a new trading account to another software, right? It's, it's if, if I'm running a software on this trading account, I'm not running another software on the same trading account, if that answers your question. Ravi, you say you see two gearboxes, which one do you use? No, these aren't two gearboxes. One is the actual gearbox and one is the manager. This is your manager you should really go back into your AP Academy. You're asking really basic questions. I'd, I'd refer you go back into your AP Academy and watch the videos, brother. All right. If you see Gearbox twice in products, that means you selected Gearbox twice as your tools, um, which that would mean that you chose Gearbox for both of your tools if you chose a silver pass, which you could run two gearboxes. It's not which one to use, it's which strategies you want to use on both, or did you not mean to select two gearboxes, in which case you would want to switch your product because today's Friday to use another product if you didn't want to use two gearboxes. But if you do want to use two gearboxes, then set up two gearboxes in different settings, one on swing, one on sniper, one on super sniper, one on sniper, one on intraday, one on swing. It doesn't matter, right? Um, you, you can use your two gearboxes and set them up differently. That's what I would do if I had two gearbox licenses. I would run different strategies. Mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. I'm trying to find the Q&A, but it disappeared on me. So hold on, let me stop sharing screen. There's the Q&A, it came back. All right. Great question. Uh, Paul Olson said here, if I get a trade alert overnight, then it expires while I'm sleeping. I'm assuming it disappears from the notifications. So um, Paul, if you haven't been getting, here's how you make sure you get notifications. You wanna make sure that your notifications are turned on. Um, so first off, if you're using MAV version, you're going to go over here to tools. So go over to your, your MT4, go to tools right here, click options, go to notifications, enable push notifications, disable notify trade transactions, and put your MetaQuotes ID from your mobile phone here. You can get that by going into your MetaTrader 4 on your mobile phone. And there's a video in your AP Academy on how to do this. And then go to chats and messages, and you'll see your MetaQuotes ID. You'll put it right here. You'll hit test and it'll send you a notification. This way you get notifications anytime there's a new trade opportunity. Um, you know, if you're not getting those notifications, you're possibly missing out on a lot of trade opportunities. Now, it will disappear from your notifications after six hours. So if a notification came at 2 a.m. and you didn't wake up before 8 a.m. to approve it, then yes, that notification is going to disappear. All the trades are tied to a six hour expiration as well, even outside of that six hour expiration, let's say you go to approve the trade uh, five hours later and Gearbox sees the trade is not valid anymore, it's not gonna enter it. It's gonna, you're gonna hit approve and you're gonna see nothing happen because the trade's not valid as well. Uh, Andy, awesome, you closed out the NZD CAD, you took $80, profit is always great. Um, uh, any chance of the charts filling up the whole screen from accessing from AP site? Um, 
I, I, uh, I would tell you, and I'm not sure why you say you can't remote desktop them all. I mean, I remote desktop all of mine and I have a, a lot as well. Um, you know, I don't, I don't know why you'd have a problem um, doing that. Um, you know, if we come look here, I mean, I have a bunch, I'm probably going to load up a bunch more VPSs in here that I don't have loaded in yet, as I just got this computer actually last week. Um, but with that being said, you know, you definitely want to be able to go ahead and, uh, you know, load them all up in RDP if you want to have the full screen, because there's no way to change that on the, the current web-based side. Let me check the chats, see what's going on. Uh, Mackenzie, last I checked, Android setup for notifications is not available, but iOS iPhone video is good enough to show, just a different store name. Yep, nope, that's it, Mackenzie, just a different store name. Um, I wonder why the Android video isn't done. I would assume it has something to do with everyone in the corporate staff not having Androids, but <laughs> that's... Uh, that's a story for a different day. We're not going to go team iPhone, team Android conversation right now. Um, do, 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 do. Let's get into Forex Factory in the upcoming week ahead. So you guys can see the news, see what's going on, and we can talk about what we have ahead, right? All righty. We're going to take a peek here. All right. We have NZD news this week. We can see CPI. We have some CAD red folder news this week on rate statements and monetary policy reports. We have uh, Euro doing some monetary policy statements and refinancing rates. ECB press conference. See a, a lot of red folders, especially this week on Euro pairs. All right. Um, French flash services, German flash PMI. PMI is always a bigger one. You see a lot of PMI here. So understanding that there's definitely some red folders this week, I'm going to be as normal practicing solid risk management. What does that look like? For most accounts, I'm going to go a 0.01 per 2000. If I'm trading with less than $1,000, I'm going to decrease my max pairs by one. Uh, anybody that was trading six max pairs or five max pairs, I would massively lower that to four if you have the capital to even do so. Again, please do not trade more than three max pairs if you have less than $1,000 capital, unless you know, you really like high risk and you're okay with drawdown um, and just really limit the lot sizes, right? And, and if you're an extra conservative user, you could even go to a 0.01 per 3,000, uh, which I would also recommend. Um, it is always smart to be on the more conservative side because the times that you aren't on the more conservative side tends to be the time that the news tends to go against you. And uh, I want to make sure everybody in here gets to keep and preserve their money and continue to build wealth with us. So make sure you're pro practicing proper risk management. Um, but with that being said, I'm going to get some cliff notes out into our Telegram chats for how I'm managing all my accounts from intraday to precision modes uh, later here tonight. And if anyone has any last questions, you know, let me know here. Otherwise, I look forward to an amazing trading week ahead. Um, you know, uh, this is a great question. Uh, Sankaran Logan, um, 0 0.01 per 2000. Should I convert my 10K OS to US first before deciding on position size? Um, you know, a lot of those conversions tend to not be too different uh, when it comes to like Australia versus Canadian dollar and US dollar. But yes, it would be wise to um, also convert that to US dollar in the sense of not convert the actual money in your account to US dollar, but the actual amount. So let's say, for example, you have 10,000 Australian dollar to US dollar, right? All right, so that's $7,000. So yes, I wouldn't run a 0.10. I'd run a 0.0, uh, you know, if you're doing 0 0.02, that's more, I, I'd say you're okay with a 0 0.04 instead of a 0 0.05, right, for a starting lot. Um, or like somebody with like Canadian to USD, for example, same concept, 0 0.04 instead of 0 0.05. So yes, definitely wise um, to definitely, uh, you know, change or convert or understand that because um, that extra little bit is just a little bit extra risk that you don't actually have the equity for, right? So yeah, definitely um, would convert it. It doesn't make the biggest difference, right? But um, it is wise to do so. So great question, uh, Sakharan. And uh Dr. Andre, I got to give you a call today. Uh, let's 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 chat a little later this evening. We're we're way overdue for a catch up, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend as well, Doctor. Um, 
But with that being said, everybody, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'm just checking the Q&A. I see no other questions. So thank you all for spending some time with me today. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next one. And I look forward to another amazing, prosperous trading week. I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you.